27. Converting the rule of a problem. Today we have a lesson, tomorrow we have a work class. Actually, I'll take that back. Tomorrow, we have a French plate during your class, so we're not going to have that. Ah, what is it? Yes, it's yet again. Fourth one. So the other class are going to have a work class, and you guys aren't. I'll give you the worksheet regardless. Wednesday, we have another lesson. Thursday is a work class. Friday, another lesson. Monday, next week, work class. Tuesday, next week is your next quiz. Tuesday is your next quiz next week. I thought we were going to see one. No, we talked about this. Three lessons. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get started. There are three forms for the rule of a problem. So today's lesson, we're not actually going to learn anything brand spanking new. We're going to consolidate some things that we've talked about, but maybe haven't seen it sort of uh, wrapped up in a package like this. So nothing actually new, no new formulas, no new process, just looking at things and making connections that perhaps we didn't see in the past. So we already know that there's three forms. The first form is called standard or vertex. And we know what it looks like. Y is equal to A times X minus H all squared plus A. general form, the one that looks like y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And we know the last one's called the factored form, or zero form. y is equal to a, x minus z1, x minus z2. If you go back to lesson 2.4, we talked about this originally back in 2.4. And then 2.5 and 2.6, when we talk about the vertex and the zeros and all that stuff, like that formula, we already talked about this. So these three forms, the way they look, their names, we've had multiple, multiple, many, many conversations about that already. But what we haven't talked about is what our focus is today is converting from one form to the next. Before we do that, though, I just want to focus on sort of the point of having these three forms. The first form, called standard form, also called vertex form, that should make a lot of sense. Because from this form, you get the vertex. And the vertex is located at h comma k. That's the whole point of having this form. It's by far the most useful of all the forms. You can graph things easily from here. You can get your vertex without doing any work. Next, or later this week, we're going to talk about parameters and properties. We're going to do a whole bunch of stuff. And that's by far the best form to work with is the vertex form. The next best one is the factored form, the zero form. From this form, we can get the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are z1 and z2. So without doing any work, we can get the x-intercepts. That's the whole point. They're zeros. They're, that's hence why it's called zero form. Why is it useful? Well, it's really easy to get the x-intercepts. It's good. You can probably make a decent sketch of this. Not, maybe not a perfect graph, but it's not bad. We can make a sketch of this. General form is probably the easiest one to work with and the easiest one to identify because it's the one that has no brackets. This form has brackets. This form has brackets. This form doesn't have any brackets. So it's the most simplified of all the forms, for sure. What can you get from this? Well, let's see. The h and the k we said was a vertex. The z1 and z2 we said were the zeros. The a's. Well, the a is nothing really. The a, we talked about how it discusses the curvature of the parabola. Skinnier, fatter, opens up, opens down, which again, we'll talk about later this week. But all of them have an a in it. So it's not like this, po this form is anything exclusive. This form also has a b in it, which is absolutely useless. B, don't worry about b. B is just a letter. B is a number that represents something which is not really good for us in a lot of ways. We could discuss it, but again, for most of us, it's going to be pretty useless. C, however, is actually something. Some of you have made this link already, but we haven't formally talked about this. Let's think about what C could be. C represents a point on the problem. Absolutely, it does. It's not the vertex. It's not the zeros. Um, there's an infinite number of other points it could be. Let's think about this. If I imagine putting a zero in for the x, right here, and right here, if I put a zero in for the x, b 
this whole thing turns into zero, this whole thing turns into zero, I get zero plus zero is zero, and I get a plus c. So if I put a zero in for the x, all I'm left with is c. What's that called when you replace x with a zero? What point are you getting? The y-intercept, right? So the y-intercept is what is c? Y. That's the initial value, the y-intercept, where it touches the y-axis. That's going to be your number c. Which means from that, from this general form, you don't have to do anything. You just look at the C and you can get the y-intercept. Now, is the y-intercept a useful point? Eh, not really. It's just some random points on the y-axis. X-intercepts are much more useful. Vertex is a lot more useful. So this, yeah, not fantastic. So general form is probably the least, use, the least useful of all these forms. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw a little diagram, or not a little diagram, a big diagram on the next board. It's going to look like this. So you need to sort of judge how much space you want to give yourself. I'm going to draw that diagram with sort of arrows pointing at stuff. And you need to decide how much space you want to give yourself. Try not to make it too small. If it's too small, you might just condense it. But if you make it like a whole page big, then maybe you're wasting some paper. OK, so I'm going to take up this board when I do it. So what I'm going to do is I'll write all three forms first. Let me just wait a second until I'm finished this. Standard. I'm going to write down a couple of words. So again, nothing particularly new in this lesson. Everything I'm going to write down are things that we've done. In some cases, we've done many, many, many times. Just maybe we didn't realize in the past that we could do this in this way. So this little diagram will help us decide or help us determine how to convert from one form to the next. We're just consolidating knowledge, putting things together that maybe we didn't necessarily know this before. Now, general form, the one in the smack dab in the middle, is the only form that has no brackets in it. Standard form and factor form both have brackets in it, so general one doesn't have any brackets. Which means to get to general form, to get to the middle form here, just get rid of the brackets. There's no formulas you need, there's no factoring, there's no completing the square, there's nothing special. To get to general form, just go ahead and get rid of the brackets. How do we do that? We simplify. So to get the standard to general, simplify. Simplify means expand, multiply, go ahead and simplify that. Same thing for factor to general. From factor to general, we'll also simplify. So general form is by far the easiest one to do. In fact, you're just using grade nine skills to do that. If you can imagine this, if you foil this out, you get rid of all the brackets, you end up with this. So it's really nothing grade 10 about, it's a simplification at least. So that's the easiest one to get to. Nothing, nothing fancy. The other ones, it's going to come down again to your preference. You're either going to complete the square or you're going to be using your formulas. If you're completing the square, you can do it all. Everything for this chapter, you can do it all by completing the square. That's the benefit of it. So this is what I mentioned earlier today at lunch, uh, when we we're taking the homework. If you want to switch methods, today would be a good day to switch. If you're going to switch and you want to decide between the square, then you want to do that now. Don't wait until like Friday of this week. Like, if you're going to switch, do it now. If you're comfortable and you've sort of picked your lane and you've chosen your formula, then we're going to be using formulas. So for each one, I'll write the options. So to get from general to standard, you're either going to complete the square. I'm going to call it CTS just to save a little bit of space. So complete the square. Or you're going to use your formulas for H and K, which we have in our lesson 2.5. 2.5, we have the general forms for the formulas for H and K. To get from factor to standard, well, look, if you wanted to, you could get to general and then standard. You can kind of do it in two steps if you wanted to. There's nothing wrong with that. But we can do it directly in one step as well. You're either going to 
complete the square, so I'll write yes. Or we're going to use our formulas. So the formulas for H and K, but it's the other version. It's the factored version of the formulas for H and K. So if you're a formula person, that means you have really good memory and you know all your formulas to use and win. If you don't have a great memory, like me, I, my memory's pretty bad, then I end up completing the square for most questions. The other side of this, to get from general to factor, you will complete the square. CPS, so or you're going to use your quadratic formula. So I'll write quad formula. But you're going to use the general form version of the quadratic form. That's the longer, messier one with the negative b's and all that stuff. If you want to get from the top to the bottom standard or factored, you could go through general form first, or you can do it directly by, again, complete the square, or use the other version of the quadratic formula. The one I showed you earlier, the most forgotten formula this year, the one where I want some cupcakes on, the H and K version of the quadratic formula. So again, this is why I said, if you're gonna complete the square, now would be a great time, because you can see complete the square appears everywhere. If you complete the square, you can do it all. If you're not a complete the square person, no problem. You just have to make sure you know your formulas for it and to know when to form, uh, know to use what formula and what situation. So we're going to do three examples. We'll start with a standard form, we'll get to the other two. We'll do general, get to the other two. We'll do factor, get to the other two. So we'll do three examples here. So convert. Example. Into the other forms. These questions would end up appearing as short answers or built into a long answer. This, ideally, our goal today is to be able to seamlessly go between one form and the next. The first one y is equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Just before we get started, I want to point out that there are so many different ways of doing this. Let me point this out. If I had standard form and I want to get factored form, I could simplify and then complete the square, or I could simplify, then use the quadratic formula, or I could complete the square from here, or use the quadratic formula from there. So just to get from there to there, uh, one, two, three, four, five. I just give you five options, just to do one conversion. Clearly, I'm not going to show all the different options here. I'm going to pick maybe the most obvious one, which is not complete and square because most people aren't. So as I work through these questions, you might look at the board and say, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that, or I didn't do that, and that's okay. So I'm not going to complete the square because most people aren't. I'll do it the, probably the most obvious way that most people would do these. So the most obvious way is to first recognize that you have general form. You need to know where you're starting to figure out where you need to go. So if I have general form here, I need to get to uh, standard form and I need to get the factored form. Again, the order doesn't make a difference. For the sake of argument, I'll do my standard form over here. And I'll do my factor form over here. And again, I'm going to pick the, uh, the, the method that I think most students would, would do. But I'll also talk about some other ways of looking at this as well. So most students, to go from general to standard, from general to standard, will use your formulas for H and K, the general form version. The general form version of your H and K you have in your notes, it says negative B divided by 2A. Negative b divided by 2a would be negative negative 3, positive 3, divided by 2 times a would be 2 times 2. This goes back to last Monday, a week ago, when we first talked about how to do this. 3 over 2 times 2 is 3 over 4. This is 3 over 4. There's your h. You need a recap of this. Go back and take a look at lesson 2.5. We did a work class the next day. We probably did about 20, 25 questions on this. To get the K, 
We're going to replace this 3 over 4 back into the rule everywhere we see an x. So 2 times 3 quarters squared minus 3 times 3 quarters plus 1. We spent so much time on this last week, the calculation is pretty trivial at this point. But if you're having any issues, today's the day two of here at lunch, or we're going to have a good, hopefully, 10 to 15 minutes left in class that you can ask me then. This should be something that we're getting right 99% of the time. There's always a chance that we make a silly mistake. your H, that's your K. The question is not asking for the H and K, it's asking for the rule in standard form. So let's write the rule. The rule should normally look like what we normally see our rule in standard form. Here's your A, here's your H, and here's your K. Let's start with the A. Hmm. If you go back and look at your notes, you will not find a formula for A. Until you go back to lesson 2.1, in 2.1, we have a formula for A. Why is this so wrong? Why can I not use this formula to find my A in standard form for a problem? Yeah? There's no Y. No, no, that's not the issue. Right? That's for a straight line. This is for a straight line. This is the rate of change for a linear function. This is absolutely not a linear function. We're talking about problems. Please don't ever use anything we talked about for linear functions for problems. So there's no formula to calculate the A, because it's easier than that. It's right here. Here's your A, B, and C. Your A, there's no formula. Your A is the same A that appears everywhere. If your A is 2, then your A is still 2. Don't worry about calculating anything. What you get is what you get. Your H looks like it's a plus 3 over 4, but we've talked about this. Your H actually is 3 over 4, but in your rule, it's going to look the opposite. That's a conversation we had. Your K is what, what you see. It's negative 1 over 8. There. So nothing actually new. We, we did this last week. We just didn't piece it together in the conversion way for this. So there's standard form. I'll do the factor form next. Again, if you're completing the square, then let's go ahead and do that. It's fine. If you did this slightly differently, no problem. If you got factor form first, and then from that answer, you got this one, no problem. Again, different, definitely different ways of looking at it. But I'm trying to do it the most obvious way that most students would do it. Next, to get my factored form, most students wouldn't go from this line. Because, look, if this line was wrong, and then you get factored from this line, well, then your factor form is going to be wrong, too. You're better off probably going back to the original question. So from the original question, I get factored form from general. So general to factor, I'm going to complete the square, or use the quadratic formula. That's probably the most obvious way. I personally wouldn't do that, but I'll talk about that afterwards. So I'll do this, quadratic formula, because I think that's the most obvious way that people do this. The quadratic formula is the long version of the quadratic formula, the one that we tend to remember. The negative b plus or minus blah, 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 blah. So on last week's quiz, even though we talked about this in class quite a few times, I still saw that. And people got questions wrong because of what I just did on the board. Yeah. That negative 3, your negative b, it's not, uh, it's not a negative b squared, it's a b squared. So that negative 3 needs to be in brackets. It absolutely does make a difference with everything. So, when you have a quadratic formula, go ahead and do it. Like I said, we. Hopefully, should be pretty comfortable with this at this point because we've done it so many times. Of course, the order of these don't make a difference. If you have them flip flop, that's okay. And just for the sake of time, if I speed this up a little bit, you get a one and a one half. So that's something we've already done. But let's write the answer now. The answer in zero form should look like this. Here's your A, here's your Z1, 
and here's your Z2. The A we just discussed. It's two there, it's two there, it's two everywhere. If you got a two, it's a two. Your Z1 is a plus one. But in your rule, just like the H, it's going to look like the opposite. So it's not going to be a plus one there. It's going to be a minus one. Your Z2 is a positive one half. In your rule, it's not going to be a plus one half. It's going to be a minus one half. And there is your factor for the answer. If you're completing the square, again, you would have got that as well. No sweat. By the way, for the four or five of you that are completing the square, or maybe even more as we switch over, because I have, I've, I've neglected you because most people aren't doing it, but completing the square, that would be your first step of completing the square. This would be step five of completing the square, and this would be step eight of completing the square. So completing the square does give you everything that you see on the board, just in one process. Instead of memorizing, it's a process, but again, you're called. There's absolutely nothing wrong with what I've had on the board, but I will show the factor form slightly differently. Don't write this down. Just follow along. So instead of this, instead of doing that the fact of form of completing square, I also could have done it differently. I could have used some things that we've learned in the past. Something that, well, even now we're probably pretty good with. We can much get numbers. What well, asks negative three multiplies positive two, negative two, negative one. So you go ahead and factor it, negative two, negative one, and you'll get a two x minus a half, minus one, sorry, and negative minus one. There, you can much get over this. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you've decided that you realize that, you know what, I can't much over this, that's much quicker. Take a look at this line right here and look at that line right there. They look different. They're exactly the same, but they look different. Here, it looks like your A, the number in front of the brackets, is a one, that hidden one right there. It's absolutely not. There is nothing wrong with calling this factor form. It is factored. It is. But when you compare it to this form, you can see that, hmm, there's an extra two at the beginning here, and that doesn't have a two here. Why not? Because mm -hmm. uh, the x minus one half is. Yeah. Exactly like if you take this, just this first bracket, and factor out the two, make the two out of here. If I take the two out of there, I'm left with an x. Take a two out of a negative one, I'm left with a negative one half and a minus one. Okay. This and this are both considered factor forms. Depending on how you proceed, if you prefer Munchkin numbering, then your factor form will look like this, which is fine. If you don't Munchkin number and you do this, that's fine, but they're both identical to each other. Just make sure you're comfortable with that. So if you see it written this way or this way, they're both the same thing. So you don't like that? No, no they're both fine. They're both fine. It's just, again, depends on how you proceed. If you decide to Munchkin number, you're probably going to get that answer. If you go uh, quadratic form, you'll get this answer, and they're identical answers. Okay, right, let's try the next one. So we started one with general form. Let's do one with factor form and one with standard form. Number two, y is equal to 3x minus 1 and x plus 5. Take a second and give this a try. Number three, I'll go back to this board. Yes. Yeah, all, all forms. sure you know which form you have. This one is currently in factor form. For the sake of argument, I'll do general form over here, and I'll do standard form over here. If you're doing this differently, no problem. Go ahead and do it differently if you want, if you're comfortable with it. Make sure you're able to show your work. You got the correct answer. One here is in the standard form. Put it to general form over here. And I'll put it to factor form over here. 
take a second and, and actually try this. Because number two has one or two twists that even though we've talked about, you might still encounter some problems. Number three is a twist that we've talked about, but we haven't really formally discussed it in this context before. So give it a try. If you're worried about making mistakes, just grab some scrap paper, no scrap paper. So without me doing it just yet, to get to general form, just multiply. Use your grade nine skills. Boil that out. Take that bracket times that bracket. Get rid of the brackets to get to general form. That's the easiest one. You don't have to worry about memorizing formulas or completing the square or factoring anything. Just multiply the brackets. General form is the easiest one to get to. Still completely square. Okay, we haven't lost or gained anyone. I think. So again, it's, it's normal. I think by tomorrow we might gain a couple people. You might realize that completing the square might be easier for yourself, or at the same time you might realize that uh, the formulas are easier for you, for yourself. That's fine. Just remember, if you're using formulas, to make sure you know which ones you use, including the ones that maybe you forgot. Katie wills the one who will be in case if he asks you for a cupcake. Because the H and K version of quadratic formula, he said I never taught it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, standard form, most of us are going to use the H and K formulas from factored form to get the standard form to get the zero, uh, to get the uh, H's and K's. So the H formula says Z1 plus Z2 divided by 2. But it's not positive 1 and negative 5. It's not. It's the positive 1 and negative 5. It's not positive 1 and negative 5. No, I mean, it's, I mean, it's positive 1. I think you're just repeating what I said. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not positive 1 and negative 5. It's not. If it's not positive 1 and negative 5, what would it be? It kind of goes back to what I was trying to get to earlier with number one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is the same thing as me writing this. There's no difference. We, I just talked about that. Here, the A has been factored out. Here, it hasn't been. So if you see it like this, you can see what your zeros are. Positive one-third and negative five. Positive one-third minus five divided by two will give you your H. Again, that's the formula I'm using back from lesson 2.5, last Monday's lesson. The zero form of the H is Z1 plus Z2 divided by 2. We get negative 7 over 3. Take the negative 7 over 3 and put it back into my original rule. Okay. Just calculate it. Lisa, so can we see the end of this board here? Mm -mm. No? Well, it's just right. Okay. Yeah. Um, you get negative 64 over 3 right here. It's just a calculation. I'll write down the rule in just a second. Yep. I use like um, for the H. I use this stuff like the the A. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's right. You'll get the same thing. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I'm converting it directly from the original question. If you wanted to, you can do this from general form and then convert from general form to here. That's okay. Just make sure you're confident in that, the fact that that was right. Because if that was wrong, now this is going to be wrong to talk about. Okay. So my standard form 
my A is 3. I can see it there. I can see it really clearly there. So 3. My H is negative 7 over 3. So in my rule, it looks like it's a plus 7 over 3. My K is a minus 64 over 3. I've made a very silly mistake here. I thought it was obvious, but it's not. The square, the little square there. Without that square, it's actually a rule of line though. So yeah, the square makes it a problem. That, that is important. Okay, so the twist here that I was talking about was just that negative one third business. And finally, the last one. Gentle form is the one form that has no brackets in it. So we want to convert that, just simplify it, get rid of the brackets. I'm just going to write it down once more just so I can do it here. Okay. Some of you are literally either just did this or just about to do this. And if you remember, this originally sent you back to Math Jail. We did this in our first lesson of the year. This is very wrong. X squared and 4 squared is 16. Some of you did this, some of you were about to do this, some of you have done this in the past. We've all done this in the past at some point. That's so wrong. You can't square the x and square the 4. Can't do it. Write it twice, and you'll remember that you're coiling it out. Please don't put, your belt, put yourself back in that when you do that. So write it twice. The simplification here, you don't add a 6 first. Bed math tells you to take the brackets first, so I'm going to do the brackets first. X squared plus 8x plus 16. I'm still not adding the 6 just yet, absolutely not, because after the brackets I have to take care of the multiplication. So 1 half times this. Once I have that, now I can finally do that addition of the 8 plus the 6. My general form. No brackets in general form. So simplify, no brackets in general form. So that's correct. I mentioned to you something last week that we talked about originally a couple months ago. And I'm bringing this up because I think maybe we got lost somewhere along the way. Last week I reminded you that you can massage this algebraically. I use those words. You can massage this algebraically and get rid of the division by two at the fraction here. You could. But in this case, it would not be useful at all. Don't do that. If you're looking at this saying, oh, but sir, you can multiply everything by 2 here and get rid of that 2. If you have an x squared and an 8x and a 28, that's much easier because then I don't have to worry about a fraction. You could do that, but that's not helpful for you at all. Because remember, if you're going to multiply everything by 2, you have to multiply both sides by 2, including the y. You have to then have a 2y here, which is not good. So don't actually do that unless you have an equation that's equal to 0. If that was equal to zero, then yeah, it'd be beneficial, and then you just a zero times anything. Factory four. Hmm. Doesn't exist. Let's discuss that. So here's what you may have done. You may have used the quadratic formula, the H and K version of the quadratic formula from here. And if you did that, then you got an error you have to take the square root of a negative, which tells you there's no x-intercepts, which means it doesn't exist. Or you do the quadratic formula from this version, the negative b plus or minus square root version. And you get a square root of a negative, which means there's no answer, and it doesn't exist. Or you complete the square. And you looked at this and said, oh, that's not a negative. I don't have a difference of squares. I can't continue. I'm stuck, which means it doesn't exist. Or you imagine what the graph of this looks like. Where's the vertex? Negative 4, positive 6. It opens upwards, it doesn't have an x-intercept, which means it doesn't have a factored form. Factored form is the one form that may not exist. Vertex form will always exist, because a problem will always have a vertex. General form will always exist, because a problem will always have a y-intercept. What? How does, it, how does this have a y-intercept? Eventually. Eventually, right? Like eventually, it'll touch it up there, maybe. So it will always have general form. It will always have standard form. Factor form is the one form that may not exist for a problem. 
That's it. Seems soft.